Hey, welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. There has been palpable tension in recent times in Lagos over the alleged demolition of property and businesses, mostly owned by residents of the state of Igbo extraction. Marketplaces and other business places around the state, where there are predominantly Igbo businessmen and women, have also reportedly come under one form of hostile intervention by authorities in Lagos under different official guises and pretexts. These unfortunate events have led to untold economic losses on the part of the patrons. Many of those affected by the series of demolitions continue to claim it's all a witch hunt because of their possession of requisite uh, official issued deeds and documents. However, agencies of Lagos state government have been less forthcoming on the reasons behind the continued demolitions. Meetings and co have also taken place between different stakeholder groups interested in the matter. Joining us now to again have a conversation around this matter is Chief Emmanuel Iwanyawu, who is a politician, businessman, and currently President General of Igbo Social Cultural and Political Organization, Wanezi Ndibo. Great to have you join us on the morning show, sir. Good morning to you indeed. Thank you very much, Steve. I'm glad to be with you. Glad Thank to you. be with you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. It's always an honor to have you on the show. Uh, let's talk about... Thank uh, you very much. You're welcome, sir. Let's, let's, let's have your overview uh, of the situation concerning Igbo interest, particularly businesses, structures, uh, homes, etc., in Lagos, given the current wave of uh, demolitions, of notices being served, etc., uh, in Lagos State. I know that you made a lot of visits last year, in July, in December. There was even a committee, I believe, that was set up uh, that was meant to kind of serve as an intervention uh, thing to give the whole process a human face. What is your assessment of where we are today and what would be your key words to those who have been affected uh, by some of the demolitions going on, sir? Well, thank you very much. I want to make it very clear, abundantly clear, that uh, he was didn't play any part in bringing Nigeria together in 1914. Since 1914, we became one country. Igbos have been very faithful, very faithful to this union. Lagos was declared our federal capital. All of us, we are called to rally around to develop our capital. You, everybody knows the state of Lagos by 1914, when Nigeria became one country. It was in loyalty and in faithfulness and commitment to this country, Nigeria, moved to Lagos and they support, did their, made their contribution towards development. Make no mistake about it. Any other part of the country could have been capital. Capital could have been in Port Harcourt, it could have been in, uh, in Asaba, it could have been in, uh, in, uh, in Calabar, it could have been anywhere, but it was Lagos. We didn't oppose it. We could have started opposing it then, oh, why should it be Lagos? It's far from us. But we, as loyal Nigerians, we came in. Igbos came in in the normal zeal, in the normal way they operate. They came in. They bought land from owners. When they came, there were people who owned the place. They were there. So Igbos didn't come to acquire empty land. Whatever property they have, they bought from people who own it. And they made developments. And every man of goodwill, every honest Nigerian, will be, know that Igbos have played a lot of role in development of uh, Lagos. There is no way you can exclude the role of Igbos. What makes a capital big is not somebody thinking it is my own, it is my own. It's the number of uh, people, the number of people who come from various places to be there. The, the greatness of Lagos is measured by how much investment is brought from outside. A lot of Igbo investment have been brought to Lagos. And the good thing, the beauty about Igbos, 
Igbos are people who are very faithful, very loyal to the system. Some people, when they come to a place and make money, they carry it home to develop their place. Igbos have a feeling, they say, Ebo nyebi konai washi, that is wherever you live, you, tend, you must protect and make very great. So Igbos apply the same spirit in Lagos. They develop businesses. Businesses in Lagos, they established in Lagos. They, they did that because Lagos as a capital was a capital not for any particular tribe. Lagos was a capital of Nigeria. Lagos was a home for all Nigerians, irrespective of tribe. And that, of, that, is, that is the reason why we all agreed to be under the same country. Now, that is what happened in Lagos. And I want to let you know that this is not only Lagos. Even in Abuja, we are having similar experience. I take, for example, uh, when Abuja, when the federal government decided to move the first capital out of Lagos, in those days, our leader, Zeke, suggested that the capital should be in the east. In fact, he suggested somewhere between uh, present Boeing State and uh, Cross River State. That was the suggestion our leader made. I think some other Yoruba leaders insisted it should be towards Ikorodu, but the federal government, in its wisdom, decided to set up a committee that now decided that Abuja should be the best. And indeed, every, but anybody of goodwill, any honest Nigerian will agree that Abuja is a very good place. Abuja is central and has a lot of qualities that make it good. We were told at that time that the, 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 the very few in, indigents who were there will be resettled. And we were told they were resettled with taxpayers' money. We were told that the Abuja, which is going to be a federal capital, will be a home for every Nigerian, irrespective of uh, tribe, irrespective of religion. In the same manner, Igbos moved into Lagos. Igbos moved into Abuja. Igbos, I want you to imagine what Abuja was uh, some years back when it started. Abuja, and see what it is today. Yes, federal government have made a lot of investment. But federal government cannot develop a capital without individual input. I think anybody of good will will know that Igbos have played a, played a lot of part in making Abuja what it is today. What is worrying us as Igbos is that instead of Nigeria to appreciate us, instead of Nigeria to acknowledge this capacity of Igbos, they are making his statements, making his statements, some of them tell, saying that, calling us all sorts of names. And that is very embarrassing to us, embarrassing even to our younger ones, to our children. Igbos have played a part since 1914 in, in building this country. There is no area of woman endeavor. Is it education? Is it sports? Is it industry? Is it commerce? Where Igbos have lagged behind. Igbos have shown that they are patriotic Nigerians. Igbos have not taken the money they, they get from Abuja to go and invest in Igbo land. They still invest the money there. But people are telling us now, why don't you go and invest in your place? But that is not the spirit of an Igbo man as an investor. So I think really that this is a fundamental issue. We want Nigerians to help us to stop people who are making hate speeches. The hate speeches great problem, and it could lead to program. The younger ones today, our children are getting worried. I read one by somebody who says he's Kakam for something, I read somebody the other day. There was no nothing he didn't talk about Igbos. He called us all sorts of names. He said every trouble in Yoruba land is caused by Igbos. You know, when an Igbo child in secondary school read this, they get frightened, they get worried. We Igbos take notice that we have not. Igbos are not going to allow anybody, any Igbo man, to do the same to other tribes. If they do it, all of us will come out to say that to 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 to, 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 to stop them. So we are appealing to the federal government. 
were appealing to the other tribes to tell their people to stop all these uh, black uh, 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 hate speeches against Igbos. It affects our children, it affects our people, and we get worried about it because we think we are doing our best for the country. And of course, you know, because of this now, it has extended. It's not even stopping in his speech. We are denied of positions. Mm. I mean, let's be, well, it was know that we are denied of positions. Now, specifically to demolitions in Lagos. I have come into it. I discovered that, you see, Igbos are not people who come to any place. Igbos obey the laws of the land. Chief Oyo, I'm Igbos come obey, in, here. in Lagos, for example, Chief Iwaya, just yes. because we have, um, you know, we've moved on to, we're now talking about these demolitions, uh, as you uh, answer, please. There have been claims of uh, possessing legally issued deeds and documents by those affected by these demolitions. I would like to know what your perspective is on the discrepancy between these claims and the actions of Lagos state authorities that say that they actually don't have these deeds. And given the accusations of hostility and what some would call witch hunting surrounding these demolitions, I would like to know what steps you believe should be taken to continue to ensure justice and fairness for those that have already been affected. Okay, thank you very much. I'll go straight to the point. The point is that it is not fair for the Igbos, it's not fair for Nigeria, for anybody in this country to come at this time when we are passing through tribulation, through crisis in our economy, to stop a businessman from means of livelihood. So I think that every government, not just Lagos State, any government in the 36 states and Abuja should know that this nation, Nigeria, is passing through crisis. Any act that will mean stopping somebody's means of livelihood, stopping employment, creating crisis, should be very seriously taken serious and then probably uh, John, I postponed. Now, in Lagos, we have discovered that the most of the people bought this land many years ago from the natives. They, they flew roads there, they built houses there, and then they are living there. Now, later, the government, government want to acquire those places. There is nothing wrong with that. As far as we are concerned, government has got a right to acquire land. But government has a duty to make sure that one, proper notice is given. Not when you just give five days notice. The person who is living in a house, he says you should back away. Proper notice will be given. Estate value should be, should be should go and value the development and proper compensation should be paid. So we are demanding the following. One, that governments should stop demolition because there is crisis in this country. Crisis in the economy, crisis on employment. We talk of all this uh, kidnapping and all these problems. It's part of the problem is uh, on, uh, unemployment, economic system. And these things will make it worse. So we, as the last one, number two, government should not say they won't pay compensation. Because people, it was all the ones I have seen, never took away the land forcefully from anybody. If they took away land forcefully, the person should come and tell the world. They bought it from the original owners. There is no land in this country that didn't have original owner. They bought it by ordinary owners. Yes, the government has a right. We don't doubt that. If the government wants to take that, they now will value it. They now will give them sufficient time. You don't just give them five days or six days. Give them time to pack away. These people have no money. Most of them are, are poor traders who have over the years made money, saving 1,500, this and that, until they make one million or so. They are poor people. If you say you're giving them five days, where will they go? Some of them are homeless. So give them sufficient time. They will pack away and then pay them compensation for the structure they have built. So that they will, they, they will know that the government is fair to them. That's all we are demanding. I think uh, from all indication, it appears the government is thinking in that direction now. But I know there are some people who have so, such hatred to people 
and they don't hide it for no just cause really. You tell them, they tell you Igbos are greedy, Igbos are this, what type of greed? They say Igbos, some of them say Igbos I before others. Everybody, it's every human being is like that. They say Igbos I be, I, Igbo, Igbo, I before others. Every tribe in Nigeria, I want you to check, Igbos are even the best. All these governments, all these people, have you seen how many of them have got Igbo special assistance or Igbo, uh, go and count the people they take. Today, how many Igbos are you seeing in authority? But Igbos are the only people who, when they are in power, consider federal character. So I think that is what that's, we want fairness. They should stop the demolition. The economy is too bad. They should give sufficient notice. They should now value the properties and then tell the people how much they are going to get. That's all. Then they can now pay them the money and demolish the place and use the law for whatever they want to do. That is what we actually expect anywhere. This thing, as I said, is not only in uh, Lagos. It's the same thing in Abuja. You know, it's normal. I have told my people that you should, most people are frustrated. I've told them as a leader, don't be frustrated. It's normal human instinct. Once people think you are successful, they are bound to attribute it to many things. Sometimes people say that drug pushers, that this, that this. But I have in my office, because of this kept record of uh, all the people arrested for drugs. Yes, I have seen some evil names here. But there is no tribe in Nigeria that is not involved in drug, in drug trafficking. It's not evils. I have seen kid kidnappers. Well, today you will know better who are being kidnapped. And in fact, you see the thing that is happening in the Northwest. It's, it's paining us in Ohaneze. It's paining Igbos what is happening in the Northwest. Not, I mean, the Northwest and Northeast. Because we believe, and I want Nigerians to know that, every Nigerian should know that it will come down if he's not arrested. And the way the government is handling it now, it will not be solved. I, it will never be solved. Because even this people now, if they want to kidnap more people, they will. I have got our Igbo intelligence, who have given me report on this matter. And I want to say that from the report my people gave me, there is no way, no amount of soldiers, no amount of money invested on equipment can support this unless you bring development, you bring security to the local governments. I don't mean this local governments created now. If I were the president, he has to call a meeting of... Uh, uh, the governors, some governors already have seen that the local government is effective. Government cannot stop all these problems. They can't stop corruption. They can't stop unemployment. They can't stop kidnapping and mandatory unless power goes to local government. If they just continue all this, it will continue the same way. That means they have to create and give more money to the states. And for avoidance of doubt, the states at the moment are the Federating units. This question of federal government dealing with local government. Local government is local. Every state knows the type of structure they require for development. Many years ago, local state had to create more states because they, they needed this for the development. Many other states too have created some local government. That means there was something wrong with local governments. It, it's not, it doesn't matter because the federating unit in this country is the state and the state. So, the local government is local. Every state should create the number of local government they want for their security, for their development, and then to stop unemployment. And corruption will stop because if you give, if you appropriate money to local governments, no, it will be local. Nobody will see anybody going away with their money. Today, everything is at national level. Individuals appropriate billions of naira and walk away with it. And nobody bothers because, but if you give money to local government, yes, and somebody in that local government take away the money, mm -hmm. it will go. If you have local government in charge of security, they will be able to see when these children are taken away. But that's what we are doing today. It's a bloody waste of money. And I want federal government to spend the, because I had you discussing this before I came in. Yes. I want federal government to spend this money in, the, in, the, in I want them to spend this money in spending arms and in creating opportunities for people, business to thrive, for people, for, for, for business to thrive in local governments, emphasis should go into local government. Yes, sir. If we continue what we are doing from Abuja, 
the thing will be worse. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So I want to highlight some things that you'd mentioned earlier because you spoke about local development and state development. So do you believe that Lagos State and the Commissioner Tokumba Wahab or the Governor Babajide Sonwolu are not focusing on the development with these demolitions but are instead focusing on ethnic um, discrepancies or ethnic tribal tensions within the state? And the second thing is that you talk about fairness in positions and you had said that Igbos are being denied positions. Do you believe that President Bola Tinubu is denying the Igbo population proper representation in the federal government? Yes. Now, as far as Lagos State government is concerned, you know, action speaks louder than voice. Everybody has seen that people's houses are being demolished. I don't need anybody to, everybody knows, I don't need to say it. Lagos State government uh, under the present leadership, have been demolishing properties. I think they have seen, in the recent report, I think they have seen them stop. But what we are saying, so leaders of the country, leaders of states, Lagos state, should tell them that this, there is hardship. Whether you like it or not, if they stop a trader, because some of, if, uh, we read the thing, people are saying, uh, Ibos have uh, occupied everywhere, Ibo traders. Some of them say wherever Ibo traders are there, they will be, will be demolished. And they are, they are making good the boast. People have boasted. They are going to demolish all stores. And they are making good the boast by demolition. And we see it. We are human beings for God's sake. Which, human, which, which group? We see people boasting. They will destroy them. And they destroy them. And we are watching them. And we, people are clapping for them. We cannot be happy because they said it. What they said they are doing. So I think it's left for the God's sake of But I think from... Report I have, they have changed attitude. But I want them to go further, to look at the economic situation and know what to do. Now, question of appointment. Let me say it clearly. Igbos are people, when they say they are with you, they are with you. Igbos didn't support Tenebu. We didn't support him. But now, I am their leader. We have said, okay, he has won the he has won election. I mean, and doing court that have found it. Anything, people now who are fighting Tinubu, they are fighting to destabilize, I think they will destabilize Nigeria. Anybody who is a protector of Nigeria, we rally around the government but to make sure the government is a success. I don't see anybody talking of impeachment. It doesn't make any sense. It will cause confusion. I don't see anybody talking of military government. It will not help. Igbos, we are business people, entrepreneurs, we want peace. We want a stable government. That is why when there was the, uh, the, 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 the demonstrations, it was decided we are not going to participate. We want to support Tinibu. Whatever, he's a human being. He must have made some mistakes. We are going to help him to rectify it if he will listen to us. If he listens to us, fine. It's, even though we have been denied, we have, if anybody, you don't need anybody to tell you. Igbos have been a major player in this country from independence. Our forebears helped to fight independence. We recognize our position. Well, you see all the appointments. You see everything done. I mean, we, we look at it. It's clear that we are not having a fair deal. But we are not bothered. We have, I have resolved. I'm the leader now. My decision now is to develop a place. We have decided, fortunately for us, we have a very strong diaspora group, and we have decided that we, don't, we are tired of begging. Begging for light, begging for water, begging for seaport. We now want to use our power. All we want is a federal government to give us the power. That's why we're saying restructure. When we restructure, we will, even if we are not president, we will now develop our place. If we develop industrial place, our young people, we employ it. Most of the problem we have today is unemployment, is poverty. And I am determined to lay the foundation of a new uh, Igbo land where young people will get jobs, where poverty will be eradicated, where development will take place. Mm. We have no intention of withdrawing our investment in other areas. We don't. Even though people are chasing us out. No. We are patriotic Nigerians. Let me tell you, if it was withdrawn from some states today in Nigeria, those states were going to collapse. 
There are some states in Nigeria today like which where states, Ibo's like which states, Ibo trader, Ibo businessmen. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't want to talk without without getting uh, the facts, but I know many states, mm. many states because and those Ibos they live Ibos. How you know there is no place where Ibos don't have business even up to local government area. Go around Nigeria, there is hardly any local government where you don't have Igbo traders, Igbo businessmen, and they are contributing to IGR, they are contributing to gross domestic product of the, of the place, and if they leave, uh, all those things will collapse. So, they to be a setback to those states. So, all, we, all right, all right, as sir. patriotic Nigerians, yes, sir. we have... If you allow me, sir, just very quickly... Well, uh, we have told them yes. they must stay. Okay. That, that, that's that's good to know so that because it's one country is is one people and 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 we you know it is better to preach unity but very quickly so i'd like to ask you uh before the elections leading towards the elections last year uh oaneze indigo had a kind of a part uh, with afeni ferry uh, that led to the coinage of ohani ferry and i'm wondering if that is still uh intact just very briefly uh was that meant to prosecute the election or can something better, given what you have told us about how you now want the Igbos to, to develop, you know, on their own? Can that, can that pact with Afeni Ferry, you know, the Oani Ferry um, uh, strategy, can that be extended, you know, beyond politics so that we can see um, unity and better development between the Igbos and the Yorubas, for example? Very quickly, sir. Yes, I can tell you positive yes. Because I am the leader of Igbos, so I can tell you Igbos are faithful to that union. Not just the one with Afeni, Antifari Ferry, but Igbos are faithful to Union of the South. I want to tell you that today, Igbos are part of Union of the South, which I think will make for a one united Nigeria. South, South, South East, and South West have come together. And the Middle Belt have joined us. And we expect also to get the other parts of the country. When other parts of the country, full of us, come together, we'll be talking one language. So when we talk about restructuring, when we talk about all of us, we say the same language. As I have said, it was today, we have made it very clear that we are going to do everything to support this government. We expect this government, too, to look to our problems. We have said to the government that... And the canals detention is a problem for us because many youths, many youths are because of this causing trouble, creating problem, and even criminals have joined them. They say because now the canal is unjustly detained, and that is made worse by the fact that a bank of proper jurisdiction here have released them. Many other people in other parts from other tribes who are young people charged with such have been released. Nandi Kano is the only person. I expect that if he was are now trying to support Tinibu and help him, Tinibu should also help us because the only insurgence we have, we may have criminality, which is everywhere, is this idea that Nandi Kano is the end. And every Monday, people are not allowed to go to work. And you know the type of security we have today, which is centered at Abuja, they cannot handle the thing. That is why we want the security to be centered to local governments. I expect that the, the, in view of what is happening today, Tinibu should call a meeting of all the governors. Every state now should have known the structure. They should now form new centers. But the local government should be state. It's only the state that should be able. Allocation of money should not be given to local government. should be given to the states. States should get more money. So that they can power the local government. Once every every local government have got security, manned by indigents of that local government, they will see all these people passing. They will arrest them. But as we are doing what all these things we are doing, if you like put the whole money we have in the country, you can never you continue blaming the security. What can they do? It's not possible because the structure is very defective. That is uh, that is the point. So for us, uh, it was. We believe in the. We believe in this unity. We believe in unity of the whole country. Yes. Sir. At the moment, we have a unity of north, south, south, southwest, and middle belt. That unity manifested in the last election result. You could see in the last election result 
uh, we supported P2B, and of course he made he went into a party that didn't was not much known in the past, but they did well. But you see, we are still faithful to that unity. We are faithful. We are apart from we know some people continue talking about it. I know that the all the all Yoruba people, the, the Yoruba leaders are with us. And besides, let me tell you, for example, now I'm mourning. I'm mourning because the, uh, the, 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 my, 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 my Oba, Lego, the, the, uh, the, 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 Olubada of Ibada. I am, I'm, yes, Olubada of Ibada is dead. I'm the Balogu, Balogu of Ibada land. I'm the person. <laughs> so I'm from there. One of my best daughters is married to an Ibada, uh, uh, strong family. And he has four children, two boys and two girls. So I have my people there. How can I just, every Igbo family, there is hardly any Igbo family that haven't got one of their children, either the daughter or the son, marrying in, in Yoruba land. We have gone too far. We have reached a point where nobody can say we should go. So these people who are shouting Igbo should go from Lagos, I think it's, you see, people, Yoruba should warn them and call them to order. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, it is not possible. Thank when you. people have reached the point we have reached, to so tell them to go. Yeah. We cannot go. And my people are not going. I have told them they won't go anywhere because the properties they bought belong to them. Yes. And the federal government, if Lagos is a capital of federal government, and it belongs to all Nigerians. Abuja is capital of federal government, belongs to all of us. Somebody, when somebody came to me and was talking about about Wike, oh, that Wike, that they say Wike is a, why is an he should not be a pre governor, I mean minister, because he's an evil man. Well, I told them, listen. That Abuja Iwike is an is an Igbo son, and I, as the president of Anese in Igbo, I will defend him. Anese will defend Iwike. Iwike has a right. He has a right to be a minister of federal capital because federal capital is a capital for everybody. It's not for any tribe. Thank every you so tribe much, in sir. religion, yes. every religion could be there. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. the federal capital does belong. Um, as you said, you believe in the unity of Nigeria. Thank you so much for your time this morning. And I'm so sorry for your loss. We're all mourning the Olubado of Ibadan.